What is up, attendees? Welcome to a special edition of Captain's Crease, the COVID-19 edition. These are tough times, and uh, unfortunately none of us can play hockey, so I thought the best thing to do would be to talk about the gear, because that's really all we can do right now. Let's get started. So here we have a pair of the Bauer Performance Kevlar socks, and I love these. I've been using a variation of these for the past 10 years. For your own protection, I highly recommend wear Kevlar socks. Doesn't have to be Bauer, whatever uh, whatever you find that's comfortable for you. I've been really happy with the Bauer. Next up is the undershirt. Uh, again, these are the Bauer Performance uh, long sleeve with the uh, Kevlar collar. It's a little bit of extra protection against possible cuts. Because, uh, you know, we've, we've all seen it happen at every level of hockey. A guy can fall in front of you and uh, you can be down a butterfly and the skate will come up and slash you in the throat. You know, again, peace of mind. Something less to worry about when you're on the ice. And here are the pant version of the same thing. I've been wearing a variation of these for, for the past decade or so as well. They're really good at wicking away moisture. They're good at keeping you breathable so you're not getting too hot underneath all the gear. Next up, we have the Jock. This is the Vaughn VE8 Pro. I actually added a player cup to this just for, you know, extra layer protection. So just going through my regular gear maintenance, I had found that the, uh, the original cup on this one had cracked from a shot, but uh, I'm glad I caught it before it was too late. And uh, I highly recommend you do the same. Just, you know, once in a while, just make sure, uh, make sure the padding and the, the plastic shells are all intact. As for the knee guards, these are the CCMKP Pros. On one hand, I do love the protection, the styling, but they do have a major design flaw. And I'm gonna talk about that. You see, there's this bolt that sits exactly where you are driving your knee down on the butterfly. So you are actually putting your weight on this, you know, solid aluminum bolt every single time. Even though you can't see it, it's still there. You're driving your weight down on it. My knees were getting bruised every single time I played. I contacted CCM, I told them about this. They were nice enough to send me another pair of them. This is how they're designed. So the new pair didn't, didn't do anything differently. So what I did to alleviate that issue was I got an extra bit of foam padding cut and sized and Velcroed in. So now there's like a little bit of extra cushioning for when I go down in the butterfly. So I haven't had any more bruising issues, thankfully. Durability has been another issue as well. As you can see, this strap was completely fraying and coming apart. I ended up uh, fixing it with some liquid stitch. So now it's great. Um, another issue was the Velcro. I got some Velcro tape and I just basically created an extra strip all the way across. It's glued in so it doesn't come off, which is great. So now I can get a nice tight fit with these when I put them on. I do also use shin pad tape on top of them as well. I really like them to be snug and not moving around at all during the game. They work great now, but it, it took a lot of um, trial and error to get here. So overall, not happy with these, obviously, but they work for me now and, um, you know, I'll keep using them until, until something better comes around. So let's move on to skates. I'm wearing the Bauer Reactor 6000s. These are skates that I've had since 2014. And it's actually a piece of my gear that I'm looking to upgrade very soon. I've been looking at the Bauer Vapor 2Xs. These skates have held up really well. Obviously, I want to go to a stiffer boot and I want to go to a three millimeter blade as well. I've been looking at the Bauer Vapor 2Xs. It's a newer style of the no cowling boot. It's much, much stiffer than what I have in the reactors. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the increased energy transfer and explosiveness that you can get with the newer skates as well as obviously the massive reduction in weight. In terms of my current reactors, obviously they've been through a lot. So over the past few years, I've had to replace a lot of eyelets. But other than that, they've held up really well. Main thing I've done so far is to replace the original blade just because they got really short. So right now I'm using the Step Steels, which took some getting used to, but I love them. They feel really great. They seem to hold up their edge a little bit better than the stainless steel blades that came with the reactors. But I'm looking forward to see what Bauer has to offer. For the pants, these are the Von V5 7800s. I've been using these for about six years now, and I think it shows. They're starting to get a little tattered and broken down. These pants are great. They're lightweight, they're comfortable, they've been pretty durable uh, considering the amount of hockey that I've played in them. So I'm going to be shopping for pants again when uh, things go back to normal and I've been looking at the V9s in custom colors, but uh, we'll see what else is out there in a few months. Next up is the PS de Resistance. These are the CCM Extreme Flex 3 Pros. They're a 33 plus 2 single break on the inner and outer core. My previous set were the 
E-Flex ones and I had them in a double break, which I think was a little bit more comfortable because I've had lots of hip issues in the past, but they do break down a little faster because of the double break. So I wanted to, uh, wanted to get close to that kind of a feel, but at the same time have a little bit more of a stiffer core on the pads. So the knee area is a recessed foam with uh, outer knee wrap that's removable. I've been using Monster House straps on my E-Flex ones and I ported those over first thing when I got the E-Flex 3s. Right now I'm using Pro Laces. Once I get a few skates in with those, I'll do a review video, compare those to the Monster House and see how they perform. For the calf, I like it loose with two straps. I went with the deep ultra soft boot just because I like to slide into the post on the reverse VH, kind of like Tuco Ask, and I like to have a little bit more of a uh, softer reactive boot. By far the best pads I've ever owned. I really love them. Moving on to the neck protection. This is the Vaughn Goldie Throat Collar. Really pretty basic, but you know, a necessary piece of the gear. I'm still amazed at how many guys are out there, even in the pros that don't have full neck protection. So protect yourself. Don't take a chance. You never know when you need it. Moving on to the chest protector. This is the Vaughn Ventus LT90. Uh, this is actually a special edition that Dukes was stocking at the time. So it's a little bit different from the retail version. It's just got a little bit more uh, beefy padding and, and HD foam inserted into certain spots just to make it a little bit more protective. It's closer to what Cam Ward was wearing at the time, which was about 2014. I got this about the same time as the pants. In terms of uh, durability, they've been absolutely great. Protection, uh, I've had more stingers in recent times, but again, that's due to the padding breaking down. So uh, looking into upgrading this is something I We'll probably have to do in the next year or so. Really can't complain. Really easy to move in these. Um, and if I do upgrade my chest protector, I want to have the same kind of ability and, and uh, protection. So the next thing I want to talk about is something that people have been asking me about, and it's the inner gloves that I wear underneath my trapper and blocker. These are really standard baseball batting gloves. And the reason I wear them is for extra grip and consistency with how the gloves feel. Because uh, halfway through a game, when your hands get really sweaty, blocker and trapper start to slide around a little bit. Uh, so these particular ones are made by Rawlings. They have a, a leather palm, uh, they got a vented finger, Fingers, so they're great for breathability, they're, they're fairly light. It also protects the gear because uh, a lot of the sweat will be absorbed by the gloves themselves instead of going into your, your palm and breaking down the material. So helps with the durability of your gear. So if you've had issues with your gloves slipping during games or just you know getting that gross sweaty feeling in your hands, I highly recommend you try this. There's a few pros that do it. Uh, Henrik Lundqvist does it, Tukaras does it. So give it a try. And moving on to the gloves, I absolutely love the trapper on the E-Flex 3. I love the E-Flex 1. I kept the same uh, 600 break with a single cuff. I didn't do anything too different from what I have with the E-Flex 1s, but they definitely beefed up the palm with the D3O. Uh, this is a pro palm. Gives you a nice seal on the ice when you're trying to cover the puck. No issues there. I personally prefer the single T. Um, I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels. I didn't want to change that. For the blocker, I went with the centered palm, finding this face. I also decided on having the curved finger protection. I also have a bad habit of uh, sometimes kind of trying to catch pucks that go towards the blocker side. It's something I picked up just watching Pecorine over the years. Uh, it's great in terms of rebound control, but uh, at the same time, I've had a few, more than a few occasions where the puck hit me directly on the tip of the fingers, and that's not, that's not good. Uh, you really don't have much protection on the tip of the fingers. Uh, with the index fingers, they did add the D3O, which is great. Uh, that just gives you an extra layer of protection in case the puck ramps up off the stick. Overall, a lot of times people think a blocker is a blocker, but you know I've been really happy with this. Uh, it's you know fairly good in the rebound control. My technique on the blocker side definitely needs a little bit of work because I sometimes tend to pop those up right into the middle of the ice, which is not good. But that's something I'm working on. Um, really has nothing to do with the blocker itself. Uh, feels comfortable, not too heavy. In terms of weight, the E-Flex 3s are a bit on the heavy side. I was used to it with the E-Flex 1s, and I don't mind if I like to feel the, the weight of the gear. Next up, I want to talk about the mask. This is a Sport Mask Razor, and I absolutely love this thing. I've had it for about, oh, exactly 10 years now, actually. And uh, it's super protective, very comfortable. As far as materials go, it's a blend of fiberglass and Kevlar. I do love how far back the sides are cut. Gives you a little bit of better peripheral vision compared to some other masks. Um, you can see the aggressive lines in the front. That helps disperse the impact from, from pucks that hit you directly in the, in the forehead. I've been hit many, many times over the last 10 years wearing this mask.
I've been using a cat eye cage for a few years now and I get these powder coated from Sport Mask directly and I love it. I love the, uh, the color options, matches my gear perfectly. The mask is not painted, it's actually custom vinyls that I designed myself and I had them created by LeBlanc Designs and uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. And for the dangler, I've been using the Vaughn Lexan Pro. Again, just another layer of protection that every goalie should have. So when it comes to sticks, I don't like to change things that are working for me. For years I've been in uh, foam pour sticks, pretty much all of them have had the carry price curve. Um, but last fall I decided to finally start using composites, just because uh, my sticks finally broke down to the point where I needed new ones, and I decided, hey, perfect time to try composites. So here's what I'm using right now. These are the CCM Premier P2.9s, and I absolutely love them. They they feel strong. Um, I don't get that, you know, that vibration they used to get with uh, a lot of composite sticks back in the days. Uh, and honestly, they feel really durable. Uh, most of the time, I really don't feel that I'm using a composite stick when it comes to durability. Obviously, they're a lot lighter than what I'm used to, and uh, you know, my, my blocker arm doesn't doesn't get as tired anymore late late in the games. Um, they're very, very grippy. I used to use grip tape on my foam core sticks. Something I'm still getting used to, but honestly, I've been really happy with these. So happy that I ended up buying three of them right away. And uh, yeah, they've been great. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed a look inside my gear bag for 2020 and going forward. Hopefully uh, we'll all be back on the ice sooner than later. And uh, up until then, I'm gonna try to do as many videos as I can. Next up, I wanna do a video about, you know, how to routinely take care of your gear to, to make it last and keep it in great shape, as well as keep it clean so your girlfriend doesn't yell at you or your boyfriend. I've also had a lot of questions about the setup I use for recording my games in terms of microphone and camera. So I'll go a little bit more in depth on uh, future videos about that. So stay tuned for more videos. I do also want to do another episode of the vlog whenever I get a chance. And I also have some older game footage that I'm still going through, so there will be some more regular uploads of game highlights. Up until then, stay home, stay safe, uh, keep your health and your the health of your loved ones number one priority, and uh, hopefully we'll all get through this together and we'll be back on the ice sooner than later. Signing off.